Hello, my name is Lisa Howard and I'm coming to you today to talk about my book. The name of my book is called Be Beautiful The Way He Made You. When I published this book in 2014 and decided to do the book signing, book reading event, I wanted to do something a little bit different as far as the reading. So with my family and friends help, we were able to come up with a skit to go with the reading. I wanted to do that so that allowed the audience to be able to not only hear the words in the story, but get a visual picture of the story. And it went over very well. It really drew them in. So with that, it was like God was, was telling me maybe you want to do it as a mini movie and put it out on social media so that those who are maybe interested in buying the book can get a little concept of what's inside the book, what, what the stories are about. So I did, I did a mini movie and the mini movie is going to follow this video. And I just wanted to explain it a little bit that there's a portion in the video that goes dark. You'll still hear the story, but you won't see anything. And I wanted to just explain that so that you wouldn't think that there was something wrong with the video. It was just a way of being able to allow you to just hear the story. You can purchase the book at www.exlibris.com or amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com. With that being said, um, I wanted to offer 10 free copies of the book. So what I'm going to do is if 10 people can email me at lcmhoward44 at gmail.com and just put in the title free download book, I'm going to give you a code that you can use to get a copy. My hope would be that I could offer the free 10 copies to someone who during this pandemic, this, this time, don't have their job, but I know that that would be impossible to figure out. So I'm just gonna go on the honest code and hope that those 10 are ones that may or not working. And with that being said, I just want to say thank you to all the essential workers, all those who are out there on the front line for, you know, for us. I'm continuing to pray for those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, those who are still sick, even those who are shut in, who may be suffering with anxiety or may be scared or you know, dealing with children and, and, and trying to juggle work in school or may not have a job. So I wanna say thank you again. And I just wanna say, stay safe, stay home. Even though certain things are opening up, be careful, wash your hands, wear your mask, keep your distance. And most of all, continue to keep God first and pray. Thank you, and God bless you. Rika would laugh and agree, but she also found comfort in knowing that if Jared was to decide to just up and leave her, like the men of her past, she would be okay because she never gave him all of herself. She saved it for someone who was worth having it, which would be her husband. So two days after Labor Day, they are on a plane heading to Mexico. When they get there, they pull up to this beautiful hotel called Villa de Arca. It was the most romantic place any woman could experience, especially with someone that you know you are truly in love with. So after the first night there, Rika broke in and gave herself totally and completely to Jay. It was like nothing she had ever experienced. He literally took her breath away. She didn't even have a guilty thought in her mind because after that intense sexual experience, 
toppled with the fact that this man waited two years for her. She knew the next step was guaranteed a ring and a wedding. So every night after, she gave herself to him over and over and over again. Once they returned home, there was no need in turning back. So the relationship was the best it could be, except that months have gone by now and still no ring or talk of a wedding. So Rika is pondering in her head and wondering why Jared had not popped the question. So she meets up with her older sister for lunch one day and shares with her how she is feeling. Her sister suggests that she talk to Jared. That night while they are lying in bed cuddling after another intense sexual encounter, we could ask Jared if they could have a serious conversation. What's up? How do you feel about me? Do you love me? Why would you ask me that? Of course I love you. So why aren't we talking marriage? We've been together long enough. We know each other well enough. And we communicate very well. We both know what we want at this point in our lives. So why aren't we talking marriage? And why don't I have my ring yet? Rika, I never said anything about wanting to get married. I don't recall us ever even having that conversation. Do you? What? In her mind, she is thinking, is this B as a man serious? But she realizes that he is. And the reality of the truth is that he never ever talked about or mentioned marriage to her. She just assumed that he wanted the same things that she did. So she responds. Never mind. Oh, seriously. Did we ever even have that conversation? Man, one felt marriage is enough for me. She shakes her head back and forth, staring at him in disbelief, and says, You know what? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Good night. Five years go by with this dysfunctional relationship, and one day Rika got the most horrible news she could imagine when Jared appears after one of his weekly disappearing acts. He calls her and says that he needs to talk to her about something. She was worried because they hadn't had a deep conversation in a while. And she knew this one was going to be deep just by the sound of his voice on the phone. But she never expected this one. Jared came in, sat down, and asked her to sit next to him. You know I love you, right? Yes, I know you love me. You know I won't never do anything to intentionally hurt you, right? Yes, Jared. What is it? You're scaring me. Well, last Sunday, I got married. He went on and on and was explaining how it happened where he was, so on and so on. Rika didn't hear a word after Mary. Her whole body went numb, and her mind went on a whirlwind in her head. She couldn't comprehend anything. All she remembers is him asking her if she was okay, and she replying, Rika sat there in a state of shock for three hours just replaying everything over that had happened to her in her life. From Ahmad to Jared, she keeps reliving all the ups and downs, but wondering why it seems there were more downs than ups. She keeps wondering why that's been the case, and at this point she is over it. So she gets up, makes sure that the house is secure, checks in on her daughter, and goes into her bedroom. She pulls out her sleeping pills and pours a handful in her hand. She has a lukewarm Pepsi on the nightstand. She takes a swig and stuffs the pills in her mouth and swallows.
She sits on the side of the bed and after a while begins to get woozy. She gets up and walks into the bathroom and stands in front of the mirror. She looks and looks at herself in the mirror with this expression of unrecognition. And then she thinks, who is she? And where did I go?